Portal to Ascension Studios. This is Neil from Portal to Ascension, and this is part of our mini documentary series that is soon going to go into full feature length documentaries in which my wife and I are traveling the world full time while we run Portal to Ascension, create conscious gatherings, conferences, retreats, tours, run our online university, but we're recording footage everywhere we go in order to showcase an entire view of our ancient history and the evolution of consciousness and what is now occurring on the planet. So in this video, we're going to be in Paracas, Peru with Brian Forrester. Brian Forrester is the foremost researcher and really the only researcher when it comes to the Paracas people in Peru in which they were known as the elongated skull people. But not as the elongated skulls that you may have heard of, the artificially elongated skulls. These are naturally elongated. They have certain features that make them distinct as if there were another humanoid species that coexisted with us at a certain time in history. They were not artificially elongated, but they were naturally created that way. So this museum that we're going to go on a tour of, Julio Citeo, we will go with Brian Forrester and take a look at the remnants, the mummification process, the pottery, the culture of these people. Citeo Museum in Paracas, and this is Julio Citeo himself, the preeminent Peruvian archaeologist, Harvard trained, he got a scholarship to go to Harvard, he was the first native South American to be a PhD in archaeology, and so he's, he's the, the father of Peruvian archaeology. One of the discoveries he made were more than 300 bundles. Each one is a mummy, and each one of these is royalty of the Paracas lineage. Each one has an elongated head. They are presently stored in the main museum in Lima. Only a couple have been opened up, and uh, so we're hoping in the future that they will do things like x-rays and CAT scans of them so we can get a better idea of what they looked like. This is the museum. This is the Bay of Paracas, and the Paracas culture were not simply here. They covered a lot of territory from above where this map shows all the way down through to Nazca. So they, they, they covered quite a large territory. So this is the conventional timeline. They say that the Paracas began about 800 BC, but that has not been proven by radiocarbon testing or anything else. It's a theory that Julio C. Teo came up with, who did most of his research, or all of his research, prior to the invention of radiocarbon carbon-14 testing, and way back farther than any DNA testing. So it, most of his work was supposition, but unfortunately, there are few, if any, archaeologists that um, try to counter or scrutinize the work that he did. He is such a, a great scholar. But then you go through the Paracas period, early, middle, late, and then the introduction of the Nazca culture. Again, most archaeologists think that the Nazca and the Paracas combined as a culture, but I don't think so. I think the Nazca invaded from the north and took over and created genocide on the royal Paracas. And then they met their own doom due to climate change, were replaced by the Wadi culture from the highlands of Peru, then their, their culture collapsed, and then the Chincha people from just north of here moved in and took over, and then they became amalgamated into the Inca who took over up until about 1535 AD. So the Inca began at 1476, around about? No, the, the Inca, in this area, the Inca supposedly were here starting around 1476. But they'd been around before? They'd been around in Cusco since about 1000 AD. Mm -hmm. yeah. so part of their expansion was to move to the coast, as well as north and south. Okay, so here we see examples of elongated skulls. I can identify this one for sure. 
that it came from the Chongo Cemetery, which is the only cemetery with the largest elongated skulls. You'll notice that there is no suture, um, no parietal suture there. And also just the shape tells us that it is from the Chongo Cemetery. And then here's another one, and the lighting is not great, but what you'll notice is that is dark red hair. It is not black hair. So that again identifies the Paracas as genetically being different from the local native population, suggesting that they came from somewhere else. And here are extreme examples of cranial trepanation. You see brain surgery performed with these very sharp chisels or arrows. Okay, so this is, I guess you would call Royal Paracas pottery, and it's very intriguing in that it's unique. Again, you see that bowl is super thin, so that would, that would be an absolute master ceramicist making that. And the other interesting thing is the way that the glaze is applied. They figured out that it was only one firing, but what they would do is they had to apply the glaze while the pot was still super hot, so like 800 degrees Celsius, and they were applying this, um, this glaze that then would almost act like an enamel, and you don't find that in any other culture. So how do you find, how would you have people who were primitive that developed in this area, who developed such a very strange kind of pottery technique? Again, it's likely that that was part of their ancestry that came from their original homeland, which I suspect is somewhere in the Middle East.